You are now listening to The Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. In today's episode, Dr. Taylor interviews Erica, a patient of his, about how she was able to treat fibromyalgia with Dr. Taylor's help. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com. Okay, so Erica, we're sitting here and talking a little bit about your your fibromyalgia story and just kind of your health history. And you know, full disclosure to anybody listening to this, you know, Erica now uh, works works for our office, works with us, and, and so she started off as a patient, uh, but then had great results, and then for a while was just kind of you know helping us, doing some things in the office. Um, and then, and now this summer is fully, you know, on our payroll and is just really an important part of our team. But I want to talk about, you know, how you got to that point. And so you were just telling me a little bit about the story. Let's talk, you know, specifically about fibro. You were diagnosed at 22. You came in here at 31, right? Yeah, 31. So tell us about those nine years. Tell us about your experience. Tell us about what you were feeling, what medications they put you on, um, you know, et cetera, talk about fibro, talk about the migraines. Where were you at before? Well, by the time I came into your office, I was in, I guess the best way to describe it, it was just I'd given up hope. I felt like this was something that, this was my life, and it was terrible quality of life. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't be dependable. Um, I had migraines too, which also just, like, completely shut me down. But with the fibro, like, it hurt to do <laughs> yeah. everything. Yeah, like, that's kind of... It hurt to lay down. It hurt to sit up. It hurt to stand. It hurt to walk. There was no being comfortable. And a lot of times that's just how somebody gets diagnosed. It's like, I hurt everywhere, and they run tests, and they can't find any other answer. And they're like, well, you have you have fibromyalgia. So it's, it's one of those diagnoses that doesn't really tell you much. It just tells you that you hurt everywhere. Well, and it's like, well, I already know that. That's why I came in. But not only that, they tell you that and they say there's nothing they can do for it, that there's no, like, you can't actually fix the problem, but they'll give you a medication to treat To cover your symptoms. symptoms. But the worst thing about it is it just creates more symptoms. Like, I put me on Lyrica and it, it somewhat got rid of the pain, but it created all these other side symptoms that were... In comparison, like, it was almost worse. Like, I, it wasn't, there wasn't that enough relief where it was like, I felt like, oh, I can have my life back. Like, it, um, I would take it at night, and I would eat in my sleep, and, um, so I'd gain weight. It triggered my depression, so I was extremely depressed. Um, it made me really lethargic, so I also wasn't moving. And one of the things with fibromyalgia that's really, like, makes it, a lot worse is when you don't move. Like the longer you are yeah. sedentary, the worse it gets. But, but when you're the same time, all the time, yeah. it's hard to get moving in order to like reverse that. It's just you just get caught in the cycle. It's a vicious cycle. Yeah, yeah. you can't yeah. get out of it. Um, so when I was diagnosed, they never mentioned any solutions to getting rid of the problem. So what else did you try in your own? You know, because they suggested medication, uh, the medical route. But then what else did you try through your own research and stuff before before you ever, you know, got adjusted or anything? Um, <clears throat> I love natural stuff. Like, that's always my preferred method is to do something natural, no chemicals, no toxin. And um, fortunately and unfortunately, I'm, my body's highly sensitive. So I have a lot of food triggers that luckily I was able to realize and eliminate from my diet. I'm also very sensitive to chemicals. Like in cleaning products, air fresheners, um, things that are just full of toxins anyways, and like more I've learned from workshops and especially from you, it's like, oh, that is a blessing that I actually am so sensitive to these things. Um, so I did do that. My house was, I didn't have any toxic chemicals in it. I didn't use harsh cleaning chemical. I didn't have air fresheners all around. Um, I had, um, I was very conscious of having organic produce. I didn't really eat meat unless it was organic and um, grass-fed. And even then, like, meat actually is one of my biggest triggers um, as far as symptoms for fibromyalgia and for migraines. So you, you know, we, we really focus on three things here in our office. It's, it's nutrition, and it's detox, 
and it's chiropractic. But before you met us, you were doing nutrition and detox to some degree, and they were helping, but where were you at? You weren't, you still had the, the no, same problems. No, I right? still had the same problems. I mean, it would get a lot worse if I had used, was around chemicals or didn't eat well, but the internal pain never went away. Like, the drugs, nothing helped the internal pain. Like, I was still in pain, and at times I could force myself to, you know, like, clean my house or take care of my kid, but at night I would pay for it. Like, the more active I was, the more I'd pay for it later. It would take me sometimes two to three days to recover. Yeah. Um, and now, having worked for you and trying to, like, help educate people, nobody ever talked about my central nervous system and the fact that having my spine out of alignment could be causing all of these yeah. symptoms. And no one. And that's the crazy thing is when, when you start, like if somebody is out there listening to this and they have they have fibro, you know, they've undoubtedly searched the internet and, and, you know, looked at just even some of the info pages, what is fibromyalgia? And they'll talk about, you know, what is fibromyalgia, like the Wikipedia page, like what is it? And they'll talk about, well, it has different characteristics. It has pain in certain points. It has inflammation and it's associated with, dietary factors it's associated with toxins but the one thing that you'll always come back to is it's a central nervous system problem it is a a a nerve processing problem you can even read you know in the textbooks it says your body is producing more pain signals than it should you feel like a brick is laying on your arm even though there's a dime laying on your arm the 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 signals that it's producing aren't um Whatever, what, I don't know what the word is, but aren't uh, the same. They're, they're too big for, for what you have going on. There's no logical explanation for why your body is overactively producing these pain signals through your nervous system. So when you look it up, you know, everybody knows that, that fiber has to do with overactive nerves, weird nerve impulses, weird nerve inputs. But yeah, like you said, nobody ever told you about working on the central nervous system, which is exactly what chiropractic does. Most people think that it's, you know, back pain or neck pain, and if your fibro is in your elbows or anywhere else in your body, that why would you work on the spine? But that's that's where all the sensory input is being processed. Um, well, it's, it's funny, too, because, like, I was convinced that there was something wrong with my brain, and I had all these pictures of brains all around, like, my room and my house, just so I could be like, okay, figure this out. If you can figure out what's wrong with your brain, you can heal yourself. <laughs> and I, I, if I would look down to the brain stem and where it's uh, going yeah. down to the body, it totally, it, it was in my brain. Yeah. My brain wasn't able to send the signals out through my nervous system to fully functional um, organs and to make my body, like, it was that was what was sending the wrong pain signals. And so it was a problem with my brain. It was being able not to get the right signals through because yeah. I had um, subluxation in my spine. Yeah, and so we, when we came, you know, we met you at, at an event in the community and explained this to you, and, and it made sense right there. But then you came in, um, we found that the, the issue that we were adjusting was in your atlas, in your brainstem area. How did you tell us about how that started or how you felt after your first adjustment? And you'd been to other chiropractors before. I remember you were, you were skeptical to come in yeah. uh, because you'd been to chiropractors. And that's what a lot of people out there think. They think, well, I've tried chiropractic. It didn't work for me. Well, try another one. You know, we always well, say, tell people, if you got a bad haircut, you're not going to stop getting your haircut. You find right, another exactly. one. Right, exactly. Or the therapist or anything. You have to find one that fits with you. And the difference with Align, I feel like, as opposed to any of the other office I've been to, um, from the moment I sat down at your booth, you guys really cared about me. You took the time to learn my name. You called me by my name. You really wanted to get to the root cause of my problems, and you were you wanted to help me like that. And you treated me like a person. And that, and then like any medical setting, almost anywhere nowadays is really rare where people really see you and they value you as a person and acknowledge the fact that oh you're having this issue. Let me try to help you get to the root cause, not just masking the symptoms. But actually, like, no. There's... Take this Lyrica. Right, exactly. Like, At no. 22 years old. Yeah, for the rest have, of your life. Have a good rest of your life. Yeah, yeah that good, was their solution. Good luck. Um, and so, from the very beginning, that it was just so different than anything um, that I experienced. And I have tried other chiropractors, and they were did not help. So I was, like you said, I was skeptical about it. Um, <laughs> but just the kindness and compassion and empathy here, that's what really 
got me hooked. Where it's like, well, that's I feel awesome. like these people can really help me because they see me. Yeah. Well, that's awesome because I mean, that just means a lot to, to me and, and about our staff and everything. Uh, how did you respond to your adjustments? Was it immediate? One adjustment, no, no more fiber? <laughs> yeah, no, it definitely exactly, wasn't. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it takes a while to get to the point where I was at. Like when I came in, um, at times I had to use a cane to walk. Um, Even though you were 31. I was 31, 31 years old. I was using a cane at times. I could not schedule anything. I couldn't be dependable. Um, I phys My physicality level was like I could get myself dressed. I could make a little bit of food for me and my child. And what did you, you just told me that you, like some of the things that you do now... When you were sick, you thought, I, I'm never... Oh, never. I'm never... You're mid-20s. I'm never going to be able to hike mountains. I'm never going to be able to... So, yeah, hiking and walking. We live in, in Utah, which is amazing mountains. There's trails everywhere, right, like, 10 minutes from almost anywhere you can find a good trail. Um, and that, I'm really passionate about it. I love being outside. I love nature. And I... My life, when I came in here, I thought that I was going to just end up in a wheelchair. Like, I actually thought it would be within 10 years, like 10 years out, like I probably would be in a wheelchair. That was my expectation for myself. I thought my things that I love to do were pretty much over, like I wouldn't be able to do them. Um, at times my two-year-old child was taking care of me, mm. um, which would just make me cry. It was horrible, but I, that's, I couldn't, uh, there was nothing I could do. It wasn't yeah. like I was a choice. It was my body had been shutting down. Um, and so when I started coming in for adjusting, adjustments, it it felt better at first, but it didn't fix the problem. It didn't all sat. It wasn't a magic bullet where it all went away. But every adjustment, I felt a little bit better. Um, doing the exercises at home definitely helped. And by the end of my um, four month care plan, my migraines were down to about once a week, maybe once every other week, and the fibro had subsided enough where I could walk without being in pain, which <laughs> for anybody who's experienced fibro and where just being alive hurts, like that is, that is, that's a small miracle to be okay, able to yeah, walk yeah. and like to be able to sit or lay down and not be in pain. Like it, it was a small miracle. And, um, but it is a, it's a process too. That was, you know, uh, that was, I don't know how long ago, over a year ago now. Two. It was two years okay, ago. So two, at the end of your four months, yeah, it's probably about right now, two years ago. And so and I was then dedicated, things kept progressing. Well, but that's the thing, too, is that I was dedicated to doing my exercises at home, to coming in from showing up for my adjustments, to, like, following the schedule that you guys have put together for me, to following the actual care plan. Like, yeah. that is important. Like, you can't just, like, sign up and expect yeah, stuff to yeah, just, yeah. like, magically oh, solve itself. Oh, we love that. <laughs> um, and so I kept, I kept coming to you guys, and then... Um, and I've gotten better and better. And today, like now, I hike two to four times a week. I do an eight to 13 mile hike like once a week, which is, I mean, is, this is a huge miracle. I mean, and I'm not using that word lightly. Like I honestly was totally convinced that my life was just downhill. I mean, I just, like I was becoming where I couldn't walk. I couldn't sit. I couldn't stand. I, I was just in pain. Like, I couldn't think straight. I couldn't do anything. I was just in pain. And now, I'm not in pain. Like, <laughs> I'm not yeah. in pain. I will hike, and I will do, like, you know, I have a Fitbit, and it tracks, like, stairs or inclines, and I can do 175 inclines in a day, and I still feel good. I yeah. mean, I'm a little sore and stuff, but... Normal stuff. No yeah. pain. It's not... It's soreness and pain are totally that's, different. Yeah, that's normal. And I would say, too, that... Um, well, uh, go on, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, it's something that, unless you've really experienced it, there's no quite words to describe it. And for anybody who's listening that does have fibromyalgia, who's tried all these things, and maybe you've been to a chiropractor, or maybe you've done elimination diets, you know, um, I feel you, I really do, but... There is solutions that our people keep. Don't give up hope. Like, if you are in Utah, come into a line. We will help you. We will, you know, like, this doesn't have to be your life. Like, you don't have to give into it. It doesn't have to control you. It doesn't have to determine what your life is going to be and what you're capable of. Yeah, uh, it's crazy that, you know, if you look it up, it says that fibromyalgia is not, 
not reversible, but if you went to a doctor right now, you you would not have a fibromyalgia no. diagnosis. And we've had plenty of patients have their diagnosis reversed, and it's just when, when it's there, it's there, and they'll tell you it's, it's impossible to reverse it. But when it's not there, what are they going to tell you? I mean, it's gone. You just you don't have it anymore. And I, we talked about it a while ago that I remembered that you had migraines. I forgot that you had fibro because it was every time you'd come in, I, I like adjust my atlas for a migraine, but then your whole body got well too. Talk about that real quick too about like, you know, detox, nutrition, chiropractic, all three of those can help fibro quite a bit. What do you think happens when you add the three of them together? Because I think, to me, that's where the magic happens. I mean, we've seen people, you know, one adjustment, no more seizures, and et cetera. We've seen people lose 50 pounds through their nutrition and all these things from detox. But when you combine them, that's when the magic happens. Oh, a health trifecta. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, like um, it's amazing. I think that, you know, it's like it's a puzzle. You know, and every person is different and everybody's going to be different, but there are things that everybody is affected by. Yeah. What you eat, like that is what you're living off of, it's going to affect your body. Um, if you have fibro and you don't watch what you eat, I, I, I literally am not that empathetic. I don't, I can't even think of what to say to you. I mean, it, it, that should be common sense in my opinion that, you know, what you eat has a huge impact on your inflammation overall. So if you're listening to this and you have fibro, first thing you need to do, change, change your diet. Yeah, nothing tastes good enough to have a fibro flare-up yeah. or a migraine. Like, nothing tastes, the, for me, nothing is that good. There's not one thing in the world that is worth having a fibro flare-up or a migraine. Like, it just does not exist. Um, and then, you know, with, like, the detox stuff, the stuff that you're breathing in, it's in your house, it's on your body, that's also going to affect you. So also being aware and being responsible. This also comes down to like, yes, you're, you know, if you have fibromyalgia, you're in pain and your life does become a lot more difficult, but there also is a time where you need to have personal accountability yeah. where you take control of your own life. You know, I mean, yeah. fibrom from in like what you said where fibromyalgia in the um med western medical mindset is irreversible. That yeah, that's because they only if treat you with drugs. It, yeah, well, yeah, that's yeah. because they don't they just treat the symptoms they don't get to the root cause of the problems yeah if you're just treating symptoms there's no way it's ever going to go away yeah you and have if, to get to the you, root cause yeah, yeah um and then as far as subluxation and getting your spine adjusted if your spine is out of alignment and your nerves are being pinched off no wonder they're misfiring yeah exactly <laughs> like, they, it they, makes so much sense they can be underactive they can be overactive exactly i mean it just is like you have these pressures on these nerves, so they're not able to function properly. So, of course, they're going to malfunction in different ways, and there's different symptoms. Um, so when you tackle all of these three things, these three core things that are just so detrimental to your overall existence and your, your body and your mindset and all of these things, when you tackle it and you're able to get these things under control, you're watching what you eat, you're minimizing your toxicity, and you're having regular adjustments, it's, it can happen. Like yeah. It, you can heal yourself. Like, don't believe what people tell you. I know for myself, this is my own personal experience. Nobody's telling me this. This is my experience. I have, like, with the help of others, have healed myself. Yeah. Like, it is possible. Well, and yeah, I mean, you're preaching to the choir here that I, you know, I think you can heal anything. I mean, and, and there's a extent of that. You know, you tear an ACL, it's not going to just piece itself back together. There's a limitation of matter. But any chronic health issue can be healed. I told that to a patient the other day. She said, she laughed and she said, even cancer? I said, there's stories of people that heal their cancer naturally every single day. I know probably dozens of people that have done it. It's it's possible. And you can either believe that it's possible or you can believe that it's not possible. And whichever one you choose to believe, you're right. Um, so I, I think that probably the most important thing, you know, Erica, that, that we could tell anybody um, and we do tell everybody this, but I think that the most important things, and tell me if you think, if you agree with this, but, you know, when we first met you, we said, this is not the way you were designed. You're, you know, you're 30 years old. Why are you sick? Why are you this sick to where you can't get out of bed? That's not normal. That's not the way that people were a hundred years ago. That's just not the way that we were designed. And so that opens a lot of people's eyes like, wait a second, maybe I don't just have this destiny of this diagnosis that I have to have it for the rest of my life. Maybe this isn't normal. 
Um, it might be very common, but it, you know, it's not. Well, because it, it ran in my family. Like my grandpa had it. So many people, a yeah. Lot, a lot of people in my family have it. Yeah. So I, I did think it was normal. And, and that statement it. was like, you, this is not how you're designed. Like, yeah. this is not, you're reacting to something. There's something wrong. There's a root cause. Let's, let's get to it. Yeah. Let's fix it. That yeah. is huge. And then just explaining, you know, explaining that there's hope and that there's a possibility, but then also just explaining, you know, that we look for the root cause and by looking for the root cause you know we start with what controls everything else mm -hmm. so we start with the nervous system we start by taking x-rays of your spine by palpating your spine but we started with you by doing a nerve scan doing digital infrared thermography and which is terrible like <laughs> the nerves like on like the does oh the scan colors. was terrible the scan yeah, yeah. was terrible it was all red like we wanted to be like white and they were super long and it was just and again i was 30 years old like, that's not how a 30-year-old should look. It looked like somebody who was probably 70. Yeah. And then looking at, you know, the, the nervous system and then working our way out from there. Because the body only heals from above down, inside out. And what our Western medicalized, you know, healthcare system does is it looks from the outside in. What can I give you to block this symptom rather than what caused this condition? Is this how I'm supposed to be? Uh, what caused this condition and whenever there's a cause there's a solution so you're a great testimonial Erica you know great story and like I said I mean I honestly forget that you ever felt like this I mean I still remember it of course but like you just come in here with a bounding energy like oh, I just did a 10 mile hike up in the mountains now I'm gonna go play in the park with my daughter and you're just always doing stuff you've got a ton of energy you're able to just live your life and and Live a great life. So, I'm a different person. Yeah. I'm the person that I wanted to be. Oh, well, that's awesome. <laughs> well, that is awesome. awesome. Uh, and that's what we're going to continue uh, helping people discover about themselves, you know, right. together. So yeah. we appreciate you. We love you. And uh, thanks, for, thanks for sharing your story. Thank you for listening to The Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com.